Welcome back, Tasha Team. Okay, so today we don't try to get you guys sad or anything, but we're going to try and tell our story. Well, most of our story. We're going to like break it down, like shorten up the story so it won't be so long. So we won't have you guys all day. Right. But we're just going to start off saying, yes, we met in middle school. And I was a shy kid, so I didn't really say much, you know. And like, yeah, I did try to have a boyfriend, like I said, but it didn't work out. And the next thing you know, it was another girl that didn't work out because she was just nasty and she was in the dude, so that wasn't going to work. And I had a lot of classes with her, of course, my bae. And she used to throw paper at me and stuff. And it used to be funny because I didn't really know, but I just liked that she would, you know, mess with me. But I never understood. And that's how we got together. Yeah. In middle school, we was trying to find ourselves and we just, like, clicked. No one can tell us, like, anything, I swear. And, like, three, three years went by. And we just got, like, stronger, started knowing each other more and more, started wanting more classes together. Like, nobody can tell us anything. And we went through um, middle school all good. But when we got to high school, like, everything went downhill almost. Like, I remember I had got expelled because I was hanging with the wrong girls in the bathroom. And they had set the trash can on fire or whatever. And I was there, so... I had went to juvie or whatever, and I was up in there for, like, almost a month. And the lady that was taking care of me, my guardian or whatever, she wanted me to stay in there. So I was like, that's messed up. You don't want me to come home. You just want me to, like, stay in here. And I was, like, so mad. So when I had got out, I had moved downtown, and... It was from friends I knew down there, so she let me stay with her for a good while. And like, I tell you how her she can tell you how her story went from high school because like and I went through something, she had went through some, so it kind of yeah. separated us. So like, so a month like, probably like before school was gonna start, <laughs> we took my brothers and sisters to the park or whatever, and then the girl she come up to me and of course. She wanted to fight, and I was like, we could fight, but then she called all these people up. And, of course, I was in Normandy, so was she, and she called some Western girls up, and that's worse than Normandy. So, we was going to another park, man, all these people come down the hill, and that's when they all jumped me. Like, nobody helped me but my brother, I mean, somewhat, but then it was like, damn, I took all that, and I still wanted to fight. But then after that... Um, I ended up moving, so we was long distance for a good, like, wow. After that, things got out of hand at my place with my parents. We, it just wasn't going to work, and I couldn't do it. So I ended up just leaving, and I moved with a friend for a little bit. Then I ended up in Troy, and that's, like, hella far apart. Like, she's downtown, and I'm in Troy. That's, like, too far, just too far. But no matter what, we still was going to be together. And that's when I ended up in a shelter. And when I was in the shelter, I tried to go to school in the cab. And I was in the loop at the time. And I was going back to O'Fallon to go to school. Next thing you know, I leave that because I wasn't getting but like $15, $25 for allowance at the shelter. And I'm trying to go to school and I wanted money. So that's when I got a job. And me and her used to ride a Metrolink. She'd meet me in the morning, and I'd be going to work. And I'd be like, you know. And somehow it brought us closer. like. And, like, there was a time when I was still downtown, and I had to go to, what they call that school? Alternative school. Mm -hmm. And I was downtown, and it was all the way in Clayton. And there was hard getting there on the like bus and metro link and stuff and we kind of like met up 
it was times where when she was going to work and I was trying to go to school, we met up and like I go to school and she'll go to work. And she'll still be on the train. So it was like so cold. I just remember it being so cold. And we kissing, saying bye. People looking at us like, what are they doing? They're too young to be on the train and this and that. Like nobody actually stopped to say, are you guys okay? And this and that. Yeah. So we just basically just, you know, kept moving. Like keep, kept moving forward. Like never looked back. Never stopped trying to like, you know, better live ourselves. and better ourselves. And after that, um, I said, I just said, forget it. I'm gonna just ask if you can come stay with me downtown with my at my friend's house. And she said, yeah. So we started like, um, both want to work. I remember, and I guess we, I think we got a card in. Yeah, yeah, we, we had, had got our car. first card. Yeah. It was blue. Yeah. And I was taking her to work <laughs> and I think I was going to work and going to school and it was so much. It was like so much in the the car we had was a Ford. Like it was so shitty. It was so shitty. I don't think it had heat or earth, some of that yeah. shit. And it was cold. So whew, I don't know. And plus we were women, so at the time like I knew somewhat about cars, and then I didn't. Like, now I do, because I pay attention. But at the time, I didn't think about oil. I just thought about gas. You know, you got to keep your car with gas to keep it moving, you know. But she went to come pick me up one day, and the car ended up just blowing up. Like, not, like, dramatically, but under the hood, it was it just messed like, up. just, like, boom, boom. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to call her. How am I going to get to work, to go get her, and this and that, and my guardian, she, I, I realized she was my aunt, and, and, but like, I was in foster care, and I just knew they said, your guardian, who take care of you, so, that's how it was, but she came and got me, and the car got towed, we went to go get her, or whatever, and, I guess this one we had, um, I think our friend had kicked us out, because yeah. we was like, we, she was like, we wasn't getting nowhere, because we just had a car, but like <clears throat> car just happened. stopped working so mm -hmm. she was like now how y'all gonna get there and i'm like the bus and this and that and she's like how long y'all gonna stay here and i was just like i really don't know because like we were so young well we was like 16 17 so young yeah. so we ended up um leaving got our stuff and we ended up going back to a shelter but it was like me and her in the shelter and it was so hard because the shelter was now like in a loop type so how to get to places we had to take a train again but it was like warming up and like jobs will only take like um kids workers too yeah. kids experienced workers and the um washington youth um students yeah so it was so hard getting a job around there and they were only giving us um allowance was was 15 yeah, fifteen twenty dollars each weekend and like it was so stressful and we started um smoking cigarettes. So it left us with no money basically yeah. and we wasn't getting anywhere. So we just what we did we just up and left. Yeah, we left and we went to um Illinois. Illinois, yeah. We were and because we was looking on in the shelter they helped us with jobs and they said it's a good working factory in Illinois that pay fifteen dollars yeah. Doop doop, they ain't tell us that, that it was um seasonal, this or that, part time, full time. Right. None of that. We just went for it because we were tired of fifteen dollars a weekend. Fifteen dollars an hour sounds so great to us right. when we was young. So we went for it. We went for it young, didn't know what we were getting into. We just know it would have been a better life than what we were living. Mm -hmm. We went there and we um that's when we got the hotel. We had got a hotel that yeah. was literally right down the street from our um job. Job. So we was like, we don't need a car. We just walk, and it was literally we walked it under the um bridge to the yeah. hotel. Remember, it was freaking. It had a little scary. Like 
We was like, babe, come on, the car's like coming, come on, run. We run across the motherfucking highway, like, so fast, like, dude, that's all you heard. Was, dude, 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 dude. We and, was gone. and them bugs, like, <laughs> Illinois got some big spiders, like, big spiders. Woo! They got some big crickets. Woo! Like, I was scared, and then they got snakes, and I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't like Illinois. Mm mm. You get lost. I feel like yes, you get lost. It's just one big country field. Lost. Nothing around. Everything. All that. But, stupid. Deer. All that. Yeah. So <laughs> we worked at the little chocolate factory. Yeah. We worked there for a good, i say, three months maybe. And then after that, we went to another one that was like two blocks down from that. From that one. Because, you know, hotels, it's not really, if it's not a... Uh, home stay like they only can rent for you for so long because yeah. they're gonna have to keep renting out keep renting out which is stupid if you keep getting people money you know yeah. but whatever so that's how they were and we went through that job and then that's when things got even harder because we just got so tired and it was a lot going on so we just took a break like we just quit that job so that's like so many jobs like I can't keep up, but... It was a lot of jobs that we had to go through, and we was going to every family member we know to, can we stay here to get up on our feet? Can we stay here just for a couple weeks? Can we boop, boop, boop? We were going so many places. We traveled so much, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the good travel. It was the, you learn it as you go, and it's getting harder and harder, and shit is getting stressful and stressful. And I just want to say to everyone before we go on, relationships are different. You can always love somebody, but if you cannot go long distance, you can't leave their side for just a second, or you can't go through something so hard to make something so strong, it's not real. This right here took a lot just to like put it together. It was like building this little tiny puzzle and now we found the key and it feels good so i just want you guys to keep that in mind but back to the story so we stayed in the other um hotel for about another month or so and it took no time to save up the money like the hotel that we had eventually went to it was cheaper per weekend and we was able to save enough money to get and hotel, I mean, an apartment. Yeah. Because I believe I was 17 at the time and she was 18. So the apartment approved us because we had little to no credit. They were like, sure, they got it. If they have a good working job, good paying job, you know, they go every day, this and that. We were good. We were good in that apartment for a good year or so. Yeah. It was really almost good. a good right and we had rent and then we got a car i believe and then the car was 420 it was like 420 for um the car the note. car note and the rent was 475 475 so and then we had pay like basically and yeah we was trying water. to pay all this all this like almost $1400 each each month and it was really hard for us so we tried grinding it out for a year, and we actually made it for a year. And all of a sudden, the job, they laid us off because it was seasonal. Like I said, we got that job at the shelter. They never told us that it was seasonal, part-time. They just said it was a good working job. It was paying $15 an hour. You guys should shoot for it. So that's what we did. And boop, everything went downhill again. We got evicted. We... As soon as we got evicted, we went back to our car, sleeping in our car. So, I guess, I think that was around, um... Summer. No, it was winter. Yeah, almost. it was winter. It was like, you know, fall going into winter. Like, we slept in the car for a good two, three months. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, the first month, it was pretty cool. So, we thought we could do it type because all we were doing was sleeping in the car and working. You know, to try to get another apartment, which we know, which we didn't know that we was going to get turned down because of the eviction. It was going to take a good three years, five to seven years to it get cleared from our credit. So, right. we never knew anything about that. We just thought we was saving up again for another apartment, doing good, you know, 
thriving type. Mm -hmm. So we slept in that car. It got cold. It got so cold. Our feet were swelling up at night. How we were laying, we weren't laying straight. We were laying like in the driver's like, seat, in the passenger seat. Got a little cushion point. under our under our feet, and we cocked that seat back, and we laid down. <laughs> and that's how it was. And we hold each other's hand, and that's how we slept through the night. Even though we had to find places to wake up early in the morning, whoever opened up first to use the bathroom. It was a gas station right down the street. Sometimes it was nasty, but if we had to pee, we had to pee. We had to pee, we had to wash yeah. up, anything we had to do just to survive. And it was crazy. It was sad, and we went through a lot of that cold. Like, we could have got really sick, and maybe, like, who knows? You know, we could have got better, or we could have got worse. And we actually made it, and we lost a lot of weight, too. We did. We was like, <laughs> it was like, oh, my gosh, looking like we were dead walking type. Everybody that knew us, that saw us, they were like, are you okay? Are you doing this? Are you doing that kind of drugs? And we're like, no, no. we're trying <laughs> to live. Will you help us out or no? And everybody kept saying no, 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 just because of religion reasons. And I want people to know that's out there that's also gay or LGBT. Like, don't listen to people. Don't let them get to you. And if they say no, you're going to say yes in the beginning. And you're going to be the one that looks good when you go exactly. to answer God. Just know that. Just know you're going to keep shining on them and never give up. That's not cool at all. So don't let them get to you. You know, be you. Be the shit because Tasia Tina shit. Hey. Oh. Okay, back to the story. Back to the story. <laughs> all right. In a car, we still paying for this car note. Let me tell y'all this car note. 420. We got to get, you know, we got to get another job, you know, oh, to yeah. keep the car so we... We lost the apartment, boo. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing to us. We got another job, and we was paying the car note. It was mm -hmm. $420, paying up on the oil change. The We needed a new battery then because yeah, we kept oh having God. to have the heat on. You know, it was cold. But nobody ever told us that going to the car lot, you know, you got to have good credit. You got to stay up on your car note, this and that. Nobody ever really told us that because we end up... um losing the car because the engine locked up yeah, and belt broke and we was done and i cried because we so kept hard. running it you guys we kept running it to go pay the car note which was really far from where we slept which we kept trying to find places at night you know to sleep and keeping the heat on keeping the air on when it was hot Keeping the light on, if you have to go pee or if you got to spit, open the door. So a lot of things went out and it was really sad. It was really sad. We had nowhere to go again, nothing to do again. And it was so sad. Well, we didn't have much money to keep <laughs> buying food. We barely could get water half the time. And it, it was just sad. But no matter what, we still stood by each other and tried our hardest to keep moving. Right. Moving. So then we end up going to... um. I think it was your parents' house. Yeah. We had ended up going to your parents' house because we had no hope. And, you know, parents always say, the door is always open. Looking mm -hmm. at. So, we went over and <clears throat> we, we got was, another job. Yeah. Again, that's like six, seven jobs. So, we were so tired. We were so... <clears throat> I sound a little tired now. Yeah. <laughs> we was so we were so tired, like we were tired of the nine to five, three to fucking um eleven, fucking all the stupid shit. We was just so tired, so we just figured out if we just kept working hard, we ended up getting two jobs then. And that's when we were able to get that car. We were able to get another car. Another car. Yeah, another car. <laughs> that's we got three another cars, car and even though we had four. We tried to go apply for it. This is when we first got hit in our fucking face and we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. <laughs> and we thought we were good because we got all this money. We can get another apartment. So we tried to get another apartment and they turned us down. They said the eviction was still close to the time we were applying for another apartment. Yeah. To where that's almost $40,000. Who's going to stay somewhere for like 40,000 years to earn $40,000. Yeah. 
Right. No. So, her parents end up finding out that basically we were stuck. Basically, we were going to be there for a good while and we it was nothing that they can do about the type. So, we end up leaving there, going to a hotel again, again, hotel again, to rock it out from there. And we still had a job, and we we stayed at the hotel for a good six months. Yeah, almost another year. Another year. Crazy. So, we stayed there, and what happened? We ended up finding another job, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we had found a Walmart. Walmart. We yeah. started working for Walmart because they was, um, I think, $11 an hour. Yeah. And I think where we was at, it was $9 an hour. So we just combined the jobs to, like, where we can be making almost $20, $20 an hour. And right. it got real stressful. Two jobs. <laughs> and at Walmart, we were in the back unloading trucks and this and that. At our other job, we were doing customer service, talking to people, and it was crazy. Things yeah. got really hectic. Like, we were, like, almost to our dead point to where we were, like, we're not getting anywhere. We might as well give up. Life's not going to get better. Got another car. <laughs> another car because I remember our last car, we got to end up getting another Ford Focus, which was fucking stupid. Yeah. It was stupid, but it ended up, we ended up paying full full sales on it no car no so we was like hey get it where you can get it the only bad part was it was a stick and she had to it learn it it was a stick it, yes it was we both kind of had to My teach calves. each other but every day we're on fire on fire <laughs> it was like you were exercising and driving i don't even know <laughs> but it was going down like that and it ended up um running up miles yeah. So, yeah. So that's when we sold that car to the junkyard. And my grandma goes, hey, yeah, go ahead, sell your car. And then you guys can have my car because I can't drive anymore. After that, found out, her and my parents, whatever, they, of course, was like, oh, she can still drive, and she took the car back, so I was like, wow, I'm glad I didn't get excited for it, because that would have really crushed my heart, you know, I knew it from the get-go, like, even she tells me, don't always get happy, or don't believe it until you know it, you know, that's, it's just, I don't know, so, yeah, we lost in our car, but we're okay, because we take care of a lady, her name is Linda, of course, and she's a very welcome and happy lady and we love her and we'll do anything we can for her. and I don't know we've made it all this way and we still are here so yeah we just wanted to tell our story today because so many of our friends were like you guys need to tell your story you made it out of so many bad things in which we did and if my parents are watching, I never want to say it was bad what I went through. I'm actually thankful for what I've been through because it, I learned so much. So much to the point the same people in our um, generation don't know as much as we know. Know how to survive. Know how to do this. And know how to have each other. And not go looking for something that looks better on the outside of a rapping. Like that, that's, not, that's not cool. And that's the same way with me. I'm squashing all drama. Whatever family loves me, loves me. And I'm going to keep living my life with my wife because that's who I've always had since, you know. And I just want to give her a hug. I love you. I love you. And life will get better as we go. It will. And we're going to keep making YouTube videos for you, yeah. And I'm going to spill the tea real quick. The next one will be a prank, so 
stay in touch with Tejatine. Who's gonna bang who? Bye.